Women perform 66% of the world's work and produce 50% of the food. Yet why do they earn 10% of the income and own only about 1% of the property? Sadly, women bear a much larger burden of the world's poverty. They are more vulnerable to economic insecurity because they earn less and they have less control over what they earn. Women of working age are more likely than men to live in a poor household. Globally, women's earnings are 24% less than men's because of differences in education, experience, training, and ingrained stereotypes. But the fact is, in emerging markets, women reinvest a staggering 90 cents of every additional dollar of income in human resources, which include their families, education, health, and nutrition. Increasing entrepreneurship among women is essential to growing economic opportunity for women and their families, and therefore ending poverty. First though, we must break down the barriers that are holding women back. While women have less earning power, they also have less access to formal financial institutions. More than 1.3 billion women don't have an account at a formal financial institution. As a result, women entrepreneurs are more likely to receive startup funding from family and much less likely to receive it from a bank. Technology can be a terrific stepping stone for women to participate in the formal economy. And that's so important because then that recognizes women's work and gives them many opportunities. And for us at the Better Than Cash Alliance, the, those technologies can be a wallet on a mobile phone, such as is available in Peru and Kenya. It can be an online payment service, such as in China, or it can be a regular bank account in Malawi, for example. Then women's work would be recognized. They would be able to participate in the formal economy. That then benefits the whole economy because half your population is doing much better and that creates economic growth uh, opportunities for everyone. Well, as a woman working in the tech sector, I look around me, there's not many women in the tech sector and it's lonely. Access to technology by women and girls provides access to tremendous opportunities from economic resources to financial inclusion, access to education, access to health care and much more. Many of the world leaders, including G20 leaders, have recognized that increasing women's economic participation is critical to creating an economic future that works for everybody. We need to make sure that parents are part of this discussion and that parents encourage their daughters to study STEM uh, and to think about ICT careers in the future. We need to make sure that educators are also at the table. We need to make sure that industry is trying to bring women on the workforce and that once they get them in the workforce that they make extra efforts to try to retain them. We also need governments at the table to make sure they're putting in enabling policies to facilitate women and girls taking studies in STEM and having access to ICTs. And finally, this is a call for Hollywood. We need the media industry engaged, and we need them to start casting characters, role models for women and girls in STEM fields in the media. And unless we are actively pursuing women's digital inclusion, and particularly women's digital financial inclusion, we will never achieve that. All the technology in the world won't make a difference for women unless we end the digital gender divide. The digital gender divide leaves girls behind and in particular minority girls more than anyone. Those without access to and training in technology will increasingly be forced to opt out of the global economy and be pushed further into the informal sector and poverty. We know that women's economic empowerment reduces poverty, so it's critical that we provide every opportunity for women to thrive because when they earn more, they give more. They make the most of every hard-earned dollar 
investing it in their families, children, health, and education. Economically empowered women are major catalysts for development, so reducing gender inequality and improving the status of women is simply smart economics.